Hey everyone, this week I'm excited to share the news of RoboFlow's brand new partnership with YOLO v5. Now you can use our seamless integration between RoboFlow's annotation and dataset management tools, including active learning, with YOLO v5's advanced state-of-the-art object detection model. In this video, we're going to dive in and see just how easy it now is to train your own custom machine learning model with these two tools. Let's first talk about why we're so excited to be partnering with Ultralytics and YOLO v5. And that is that we believe this is going to support our mission of democratizing computer vision. At RoboFlow, it is our strongly held belief that computer vision will transform every industry for the better. But in order to do that, you have to put it into the hands of every developer. And in order to do that, you have to make it easier to use. YOLO v5 is about that same sort of democratization and making computer vision something that anyone can use, not just machine learning experts. In fact, it's already become one of the most popular repositories on GitHub. We wrote about all of these things in our announcement blog post of this partnership. I'll link to this in the comments below, and you can read more about what this partnership's all about, what it entails, how you can get started, uh, and some, some helpful links. But the important bit, I think, is at the end, in that YOLO v5 is just the first model that we're partnering with. We're really excited to support the entire open source ecosystem around computer vision. This can't just be about one company or one model. If we want computer vision to be everywhere, it means working together as a community to create a movement around computer vision. So stay tuned because this is just the beginning. But let's dive into this particular partnership and how you can get started using it to train your own computer vision models. To get started, just go to the YOLO v5 GitHub repo which I'll post a link to in the description below. While you're down there, why not take a second to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more great computer vision content. Once you're on the repo, scroll down to the tutorials section and use the train custom data tutorial. From here, you can either scroll through and learn about what we're about to do, or just dive right in by clicking on the YOLO v5 custom training notebook at the top of the file. This opens a Colab notebook, which is Google's hosted Jupyter notebook platform that gives you free GPUs to use and an interactive code editor. So the first thing that you wanna do is go to file and then save a copy in drive. This will copy the open source notebook onto your own Google drive so that changes you make will be able to be used by yourself later and be stored inside of your own Google drive privately. So I'll go ahead and name this YouTube tutorial YOLO v5 in my own Google Drive. Now, I can scroll down to this gray code cell, and when I hit Shift Enter, it's gonna go ahead and run the code in that cell. So this is gonna clone the YOLO v5 repo, it's gonna install the requirements, and then it's gonna print out information about the environment. Like I said, Google's gonna give us a free GPU to use here, and this is how we can learn what type of GPU they gave us. So here we can see they assigned us a Tesla P100 GPU with 16 gigabytes of video RAM, and that's gonna be more than adequate to train this custom YOLO v5 model. Next, we're gonna jump into RoboFlow to set up our data set. There's a few steps to this, um, but I'll walk you through all of them. You just need to click this link to kick you into RoboFlow and get walked through the entire process. So this notes that we came through the YOLO v5 tutorial, so it's gonna tell us what we're about to do. First, we're gonna upload our data set to a new project in a public workspace. Then we're gonna label any unannotated images. And finally, we're gonna copy and paste a snippet back into the notebook. So if I go back to that other tab, I can see that there's a cell here that uh, has some commented out stuff that says your API key here, your project here, your version here. And what RoboFlow is gonna do is give us a snippet with those things filled in that we can paste back to the other side. RoboFlow is gonna host our data set for us so that our Jupyter Notebook can access it. RoboFlow is completely free for public projects. So that means if you're willing to share your data back publicly with the community, you can use all of our most advanced features completely for free. This is subsidized by business users who need to keep your, their data private who have to pay for the service. 
But for the sake of this tutorial, you need to select a public workspace so that we'll be able to use all of the advanced features that we're going to try. So once I select public, I can uh, then come into my project and I'm going to upload new images. To get started, I just create a new project. I'm going to create an object detection project called chess pieces because that's what we're going to train a model to identify. So here I'm going to uh, say that the thing that we're annotating are pieces and I'm going to leave the other settings like the license the same. Once I create the project, I'll be able to add images and optionally annotations if they have them. So if I just upload my images here, I can use RoboFlow to label them. But if I already have a data set, meaning that I've labeled with another tool or I've gotten this uh, data set from another source, I might already have some annotations. So here I have annotations of chess pieces in VOC XML format that describe where the pieces are. And I'll go ahead and drop those into the project as well, which will annotate them. And then we'll use RoboFlow to convert them for the proper format for YOLO v5. So once I've dropped in all of my images and optionally my annotations, I just click finish uploading and it'll ask me whether I want to add them to my training, validation, or testing set. If you don't know what this means, usually the default is the right option to use and this will put them mostly in the training set, um, but reserve some for your validation and testing sets. If you need to know, know more about this, uh, we have some great content which I will also link to below. Once I click continue, this will upload the images to my account and it'll take me to the annotation view. So if you noticed, one of those images that I uploaded didn't yet have an annotation. Uh, here, if I click on it, I can see that it has a white bishop that I need to label. I'll show you how the other images were labeled in just a second, but here I just come in and I click white bishop, um, which it knew was one of the classes because it detected it from the other annotations that I uploaded, and then I'm done. Now all my images are annotated. So if I go into my training, validation, or testing set, I can see all of the images there. If I blow them up, I can see how they're labeled. So these came from the XML file and it shows that each uh, board has all of the pieces labeled on it. Now I'll go ahead and click generate a new version. So this creates a point in time snapshot of my project that I can use for training a model. In this case, we're gonna use that snapshot to train YOLO v5. I'll go ahead and leave all these settings the same. Uh, it's a best practice to leave auto orient on and resize stretch to on. Uh, you might want to change the size though. This is what we'll use for the size of the model. Um, YOLO v5 can work with 416 by 416 or 620 by 620 or bigger and bigger sizes as well. The trade-off is the um, time and memory usage while you're training. We'll leave all of the augmentations off for YOLO v5, but you might want to experiment with them on your own. This will let you uh, modify each image to give your model more training data to go off of. Um, but for YOLO v5, it's often not necessary because they actually do those as part of the training process. Some other models really benefit from added augmentations though. So I'll go ahead and click generate. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna export those images in the right format to use. So I'll just call this uh, version tutorial and then I can click export. So these images have now been hosted and they're ready to use. And I just need to tell it what format I need. And so uh, for YOLO v5, I click YOLO v5 uh, and show download code. So this is gonna go ahead and zip them up for me for use in my particular CoLab notebook and give me the snippet that I need to paste back. So if I just go ahead and copy this here um, and it blanks out my API key, but it's actually behind there when you copy paste. Um, which we'll see that in a second and I'll revoke my key afterwards. Once I go back into my notebook, I just find this cell with the commented out um, area where I'm supposed to copy paste my stuff back in. I paste in my code snippet from RoboFlow which references my account, this projects we just created and the format we exported it in. And it downloads it into this notebook um, because RoboFlow is hosting this for us. So if I go into my data sets folder of my Jupyter notebook over here, I now see that I have a chess pieces folder, uh, which has a train valid and test set. And inside of those are my processed images and my annotations now in YOLO v5 format. So if I open that up, that's now a text file instead of the XML that I started with. Uh, and it has them all formatted properly for what our um, training script is going to expect. That's the only thing that I need to change in this notebook in order for it to train. So if I come down here and I run my train.py, um, 
with the default settings, um, and again, you might need to update this input size of the model to match what you resize them to, it'll download the weights and it'll kick off training. Um, we can see here that uh, this is processing all my images and now we're off to the races. So I'll let this run for a little bit and come back and in a few minutes, we'll see how our model did. With only um, about 12 images to train off of, uh, it's gonna be pretty uh, overfitting pretty hard, uh, but we'll see what we can do with just this few number of images and we'll visualize our results in just a moment. All right, we're back. And um, maybe I didn't even need to pause the video at all because training only took about two minutes. Um, remember, we only uploaded 12 images and we only ran through those images 149 times each. So that means there wasn't really much for the GPU to do and not much for the model to learn off of. That's reflected in this pretty poor score of 7% mean average precision. Uh, you should get a much higher score with a better data set. But in terms of showing you how the custom training process works with RoboFlow, this is uh, enough to suffice. Um, but in fact, you will want to gather much more than one example per class like we had on some of our data set. But let's scroll down and see how we can use these trained results uh, below. So if we use detect.py, this will run um, our saved weights um, on our test images, and then we'll be able to visualize them. So here I will go ahead and visualize our results. So you can see it's predicting pieces. Um, looks like it's predicting too many pieces. Um, on this one test image, which is all that we have, um, but it predicted something nonetheless. You can see that it's got some boxes around individual pieces. So that's all there is to it. Um, you can train a model now with RoboFlow and Yolo V5 by just copy and pasting one code snippet into a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, if you train something cool, let us know. And if you don't have a data set yet and want to find one to use, um, you can just go to universe.roboflow.com. And um, as I mentioned earlier, everyone who's willing to contribute their data set back into the, into the public domain uh, to help the community is uh, sharing their data set on RoboFlow Universe. So you can use these as inspiration for projects to try or as the starting point for your own model. Um, happy training and really excited to see what you come up with.